Hello and welcome to uh, this part two of the PLC ladder logic. We'll talk about the timers and counters. Timers and counters are very important in any PLC programming and you will never find an PLC uh, application with which you do not use or need to use a timer and uh, counter. Timers can be in a different a forms can be what they call it on delay, off delay, fast timer. So we'll look at all of these and we'll look at the counters as well in this video. So in the beginning, we need to know that the timers can have a different shapes and forms, as we said, but every PLC can offer you a specific number and quantity and resolution for these timers based on the PLC manufacturer and the PLC CPU itself. Now each a timer should have a unique reference name could be t1 could be timer one could be anything now with each timer you have some bits these bits will indicate if the timer is timing that's mean it is running if it is reached the preset value or not and if it is enabled it will start if it is not enabled it will go to zero and then we will see all of this in a real examples so let's look at a timer as if it is a stopwatch and you have a mark on the 25 seconds of your stopwatch. The stopwatch will never run until you press your button. When you press the button, your timer will start, your stopwatch will start. Now this means you enable your timer or you started your stopwatch. Once you reach your the 25 seconds mark or your preset value then you can do some actions based on this uh, the timer or your stopwatch value so before this a preset value you have status and after this 25 seconds or the preset value you have uh, a status change so let's take alan bradley in the beginning so with each timer which is on time delay timers or on delay timers in Alan Bradley there is some associated bits and uh, integers associated with each timer so in this timer let's say timer x timer one two three you have a bit called enable once you enable the timer this bit is on if you do not enable it it is off but if you enable it then this timer start timing that's mean this bit tt is on now, if it is not enabled, this TT is not timing, it is zero. The, the timer will start timing from zero to a preset value, which is an integer which dictates the preset value of this timer. Once you reach the preset value, your timer will stop timing and your bet, which indicates that it's done, is become now on. So if your accumulated value reaches the preset value, your done is on and your TT will be zero. The accumulated value is holded or saved or uh, written in, uh, value in the register called timer one or X dot ACC. If you look at this graph, your timer starts timing when it's enabled and it's in one, two, three, until it reach the preset value. Once you reach the preset value, it will stop timing and your timer is done. When the enable signal is off or the timer is disabled, the value in the accumulated uh, register become zero. So this is a real example for Alan Bradley. So if we look at Alan Bradley, uh, time on delay timer, if you have a limit switch one is on, then your timer start timing. That's mean TT is on. That's mean light two is on. When you reach the 180 mark, which is the preset value, your TT will stop. That's mean light two will be off, but the done bit will be on. That mean this bit is on, light three will be on. So between uh, zero, or more than zero, let's say when it starts timing to 180, you got this guy's on. Once you reach 180 and you still have this one is on, you got light three on. Here is another way to explain it. This enable signal goes on with the rising edge of the enable signal, your start timing. 
and then when you reach the preset value, your TT signal or bet will go off, but the done signal will be on, and it will still on until your enable signal goes off. If your enable signal will be for a time period less than the preset value, then your TT will follow the this signal only. So let's look at a different manufacturer, Automation Direct. In Automation Direct, they call it on delay timer. When they have their CO1, which is an inter internal contact, when it's on, you can replace it with a limit switch or push button. I don't think push button will work because the push button you have to hold it. So and this is a limit switch and or an internal uh, contact is on, your timer will start to be on. You, when you reach the value of K, 20 seconds, then your output will be on. If you can look at the graph here, your signal start to be on to enable it. After two seconds, then your output will become on. Your output become off with your enable signal. So this is the on delay and it looks at the name, it very uh, express, expressing the name here. That's your input change from off to on, then you wait two seconds and then you have your output start to go on. If your enabled signal is less than two seconds, then your output will never be shown up. Now let's look at the off delay in Alan Bradley. If this switch 2 goes from on to off, that means it is cleared, then it will start timing. When it starts timing, the TT is true, then light 2 become true. Then as they said here, when timer accumulated reach 180, that means it will stop timing, then what has happened, it, light 2 will be off. Light 3 will be on. And light 3 will be on until the this signal is actually is enabled. Now look at automation direct again of delay timer. They completely different scenario here. What's happened is that you have a pulse or your C100, uh, your enabled signal goes on. Once it is goes on, then my output goes on. And then when it goes off, my output stay on after my enabled signal goes off by this period of time, which is the preset value of 500. 500 which is 50 seconds this is remind me with your door and your car door when you open your door car door the light goes on so exactly here you open the door your light goes on you close the door the light stay five seconds and then it's become off now again in automation direct they have a different type of timers which is uh, it's called just timer it has a reference, let's say T17, T15, whatever. So this is it just its number, it means its reference. And it has a preset value. In this case, we said 10, K10, K constant 10. We can use a, a register here. So we can use a preset value based on whatever in a register. So it's not hard to code it, but it is, you can change it during the program. And then it has a value of one to nine 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 nine. So each timer can have a maximum number of times. Now, when you enable X one, which means it's on, your timer starts from one, two, three, four until reach its maximum. During this value time, if your timer is more than three but less than one hundred, I can do some action. If my timer is more than or equal some value, I can do some action. It has nothing to do with your preset value. It's just comparing your accumulated value in your timer with a constant value or a register in the PLC. But when your, PLC, uh, your timer reach the preset value, its status become on, then I can to do some action. So. This is another way of doing timers, and this is specifically automation direct timer. 
So in this timer, what we did, we have one signal, which is enable signal. It goes on, the timer starts counting, counting. When the enable goes off, the timer goes to zero. In between, you have a preset value. When you reach the preset value, then the timer has become on. The status of the timer is on and the timer status off below this value. So this is status is just a bit for each timer. Let's look at different timer in automation diary. They call it accumulating timers. What does it mean? It means if you are enabled, if you enabled your timer, it starts timing. When the signal which is enabling my timer goes off, the timer does not lose its value. It's holding the last value in it. And then when the signal is going back on again, it will start counting, adding time to the uh, value which is accumulated in the timer and so on. So you can have this timer uh, keeping its time and as with your enable signal. So if you look at, let's say, uh, your just for the sake of what we're talking about now, as you have a pump. Now, if the pump is running, you have the signal is running, so you have the timer is counting how many seconds the pump is running. Now, the pump is off, then this uh, timer will hold the value and so on. So you now have a timer which will tell you how long this pump had been running for. There is another way it's easier if you have time, let's say your pump is uh, accumulating each time it reach one minute, you can actually have a counter and this counter become one. So that's mean one minute or one hour and so on. So you can actually use your timer, accumulated timer to trigger a counter for the hour. So if I can have my timer 60 minute only and then each 60 minute, I can have one hour in my accumulated uh, counter. So uh, this is very important points here, the three points only. I just summarize them in three. They make, you can add more if you like. Uh, the first one is that how many timers you can have in, in a PLC. Uh, obviously, it is not only the PLC like mean, Alan Bradley, C means, uh, uh, or whatever, the modicon or something else, it based on the CPU actually. So within the PLC, let's say Alan Bradley, you have many CPUs. Each CPU will allow you to use, let's say, eight timers or 128 timers or 500 timers based on your CPU capacity. Now, uh, how the resolution uh, works for each one of those timers, you can have a resolution of one milliseconds or 10 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, so the tick of each timer, when the timer goes from one to two, that's mean one millisecond or 100 millisecond or one second. So that's again based on your CPU. Now, uh, obviously you have a preset value associated with each timer, but does your timer start counting and continue counting after the preset value or not? Again, based on your uh, PLC, you may have a different scenarios. Okay, so now let's look at uh, mechanical timers. So in the world of mechanical timers, we use timers called, let's say, this is an Omron one. Uh, just this is for comparison. When we talk about on delay timer in the mechanical world, we have a pulse. When you have this pulse, after a few seconds or T seconds, you will have your output. So that is on delay timer. It looks like the automation direct more than the Alan Bradley in this case. Uh, again, off delay, that means you have an input pulse. And when this pulse goes off, your output, which was on with your signal or your input, and your signal disappear, but it will continue for t seconds. Now, we said a pulse here, but it could be applying the power to your uh, switch, sorry, your relay. Now, again here, this is another type. The same uh, timer can be flicker. When you have a pulse or you admit power to it, giving it power, it will start to turn between on and off for a specific time, predefined time. Again, you have interval. 
That means when you give it a pulse with the rising edge of your pulse, it will have an output for a specific time, regardless of your pulse width. So the pulse could be one second, this could be 10 seconds. If your pulse 100 seconds, it doesn't matter. So it, with each pulse rising edge, you will have only 10 seconds. So just this is for comparison to know what we do with the mechanical relays. Uh, let's say you have a pulse, your counter goes one up. Again, another pulse, so your counter now two, three, four, and five. In the down counter, but not every PLC will allow you to, to find, you will not find it in all PLCs, is count down. So you count from, let's say, 10 to 9 till 0. Obviously, there is no count below 0. This uh, counter number 3 is you have only one up direction with the enable. So you have a pulses here, you will have your counter goes up 1, 2, 3, 4. When you have a pulse on this, uh, leg your counter goes to zero this is more advanced counter which is you have one up one down so you look at it as if it's you have something with a pulse will count up another pulse on this leg it will count down but pulse in this leg will give you a reset for the counter let's look at Alan Bradley counters so with pulses on switch one, your counter will start to count. If you have a 10 counts on uh, 10 pulses on switch one, that means your counter, which is counter one, had been counted 10. So the accumulated value will be now 10. That means it's equal to the preset value, which was 10. That means this counter is done, right? So when the counter is done, then my light one will be on so each 10 pulses on the switch one will give me a done and will allow light one to be on now switch two will reset my counter so this counter doesn't have any leg to reset it in it but it has to be on a different rung to reset this counter Uh, here we have interesting uh, traffic light. Uh, this intersection is a simple intersection. We have two roads intersects and there is no turning. There is no uh, anything. So no special thing about it. It's just two roads intersect with each other. And you have direction of the traffic in this direction and then in the other direction. That's it. Nothing more than that. So what we will look at here is the pattern of the traffic light on both roads. Road one, you will have a red light. While you have red light on road one, road two will change between green and yellow. And then it goes into red, allowing road one to be green and then yellow. So you have a 60 second of red. During this 60 second, you have 52 seconds green, eight seconds of yellow, and then 40 seconds of red for road two while you have road one 33 seconds or a green and then seven seconds is yellow the reason we change them because uh, road one and road two is different sizes so your anticipation is that you anticipate that you have less traffic on road one so you do not allow more than uh, 40 seconds road to, to go on this road if you can see here that there is no gap once this one change from red to green this change from yellow to red so there is two approach for this problem the first approach is that if you look at this, if you analyze the system you can find that you have 60 second and then you have 40 second the 60 second period you have two actions in between the 60 second and one action for the full 60 second and then in the 40 second you have one action for the full period of the 40 second but you have two actions in between the 40 seconds this is the first approach so you have 60 second and then 40 second then 60 second 40 second so my cycle is 60 second and 40 second so this is the first approach the second approach if you look at is 60 plus 40 that's mean 
100 second is the cycle and within this 100 cycle you have between 0 and 52 green between 52 and 8 yellow between 0 and 60 this guy will be red between 60 and 100 this is red between 60 and 93 green and so on so let's see how we will do the automation direct ladder logic in the first scan of the cpu sp0 will be on for one scan only then it will set c1 once c1 is on then your timer t1 will start timing once uh, C1 will be on, that means your red light for the road one will be on and your timer start counting. C1 is on still and TA1 is less than the 5000. This means it's between 0 and 5000. Then your green light of road 2 will be on. Once you reach the mark of the 5000, which is the 50 seconds, this contact will be off. This means the green will be off and then you will have this contact will be on because TA1 is more than the 50 seconds. That means your yellow will be on. Once you reach the 60 second T1 status will be on. So this one only will be on or true if you reach the 50 seconds. Once this 60 second reached then T1 is on. What will happen is that you reset C1. That means this guy is now uh, off. This guy is off. C1 here is off. Then that means T1 will stop timing. And then the red light will be off. The green light will be off. And this guy also, the yellow, will be off. But also you will set C2. Once you set C2, you start a second timer for the next 40 seconds. Now, when the 40 seconds start counting, the T2, you will have C2, you will have the red light of the road 2 will be on, and uh, your green for the road 1 will be on between 0 and 4000, or the 40 seconds. Once you reach the 30 second mark, uh, your yellow will be on, and the green of road 1 will be off, and then once you reach the 40 second of the T2, what will happen is T2, this contact will be on, you will reset C2 and you will set C1. C1, when you reset it, you go back, activate T1. So what's happening is that you have two timers, each one for its own time, 60 and 40. This guy will be on for 60 second and then it be off for 40 seconds while this guy is timing for, for the 40 second and so on. So now we will look at the same traffic light from another perspective. We'll have only one timer which it will reset itself. So how it reset itself and when it reach let's say its preset value it goes back to zero automatically in automation direct you will get the uh, status contact of this timer as your input as normally close. So when this timer is below its preset value, this contact is true. So it is active. So your timer will start counting. And then when it reaches its preset value, the T10 become on. That means this guy is not true anymore. And you will reset your timer. In Alan Bradley, what you do is you put here instead of T10, you put the done bit. So the, as long as the timer is not done, it will be true so it's not normally closed done bit so this will allow your timer to start counting once it reach its preset value then the timer done will be on that means the normally closed contact will be off that means your timer will be reset by itself so this is how to use a timer which is always reset itself to a certain value the preset value so now we have one timer for, let's say, 100 seconds. The reason I'm using 9999, I assume that you cannot use in this timer more than 9999 value. So let's say this is our 100 second. This is 99.99 second. So if you are between 0 and 60 second, the first red light will be on. If you are more than the 
6,000, your green light will be on. Oh, sorry, you are less than the 50 second. Then the green will be on. If you are between the 50 second and the 60 second, yellow is on. If you are more than the 60, red. If you are more than 60, but less than 90, you get the green. If you are more than the 90 seconds, you got the yellow. So what we do here is we look at within this one timer what's happened in the intervals. So either you are below a certain value or you are more than a certain value or you are between some values. So this is how we do it. More than this, less than this. More than this value or less than this value. Now you have looked at your uh, PLC ladder logic and there is some quiz if you would like to exercise if you understand what is going on here. Now you need to change the uh, ladder logic to include a uh, red two seconds red in between those intersection transitions. That's mean you don't transit from uh, yellow to red directly was synchronized with the green but you change the yellow to red for two seconds so the both uh, traffic lights uh, will be red and then you change the red to green so this is your first quiz the second quiz is the 60 second and 40 seconds based on let's say uh, the time of a day so between seven o'clock and nine o'clock it will be uh, instead of 60 will be 90 seconds and the 40 will become 30 seconds and so on and then between 9 and let's say 12 it will be or 9 and to 1 or to 2 you will have uh, 60 and 40 and then between 2 and 6 instead of 60 and 40 become something else let's say 90 and 30 so again uh, look at the day if it is Saturday you will do something if it is Monday you will do something so now uh, the third thing is that after midnight to six o'clock in the morning you will have no traffic change it will be flashing second uh, on second off of your red light so one second or two seconds is up to you so you will have flashing light so it will be a uh, four-way stop traffic light now again now if you look at this example what we used here is time of day that means the clock and the day of the week that means your CPU should have a calendar in it and a time a clock in it so the reason I'm putting quest 2 is lo let you know that some of the PLC CPUs is not suitable for this application so even if you have the number of IO is okay you can do with it but because your PLC CPU does not support calendar and a clock then this CPU is not suitable now in the third quiz uh, you have a uh, traffic light between two intersections but one of them doesn't see much cars coming in so now you will stop this traffic light while there is nothing here so what we added we added something uh, a switch or a detector or a camera or something in the road uh, we embedded in the asphalt to detect if there is a car in this intersection so if there is no car in this intersection we'll keep the green light on we will not have a timer just the green light on all the way until you see a car coming and stopping in this intersection once you have a car in this intersection then your green will go to yellow or will wait and let's say 30 seconds and then goes from green to yellow to red allowing these cars to move on now we'll look at a compressor. So of course, this is not a real application, but just an, an example, an illustration of how we will do some uh, uh, compressors a startup sequence. So uh, in the startup sequence, you have to uh, do it in a flowchart to understand what is going on. 
So we receive the start command from your push button. The push buttons actually start your lube oil. So we we'll start maybe the lube oil pump. We may start the lube oil fan or both or whatever. So we will start our uh, motor for the pump, lube oil pump. Now we will wait T1 seconds and then after this T1 second we will check a pressure if the pressure is on or not. I mean the pressure reach the the uh, the value we want it could be a pressure switch could be a pressure transmitter. If we reach the pressure the available uh, the, uh, sorry the design the pressure then we will start our main motor. If not then we will trigger a counter. So we'll, now our counter will count one. That means we uh, we have first attempt of uh, start up and failed, but it's not failed. But we say that we will increase our counter by one, and check now the counter has it reached three or not. If not, then I will reset my timer and will allow T1 to work back again. So I will count again. Let's say another ten seconds. So the first ten second, my pressure did not develop. I waited another ten second by my counter and then it did not develop i will count for third time so that means i allowed the uh, pressure to develop for 30 seconds now if my counter reach three that means i have three attempts i will stop my loop oil i will have an alarm i will do many things and then i will wait for the uh, operator to clear my alarm and acknowledge that he see that we have a problem and then he will allow to new start so let's look at the ladder logic now we are in automation direct uh, ladder logic we have uh, and the x2 is our input as a start of your compressor once you started you have a pd the pd uh, is a pulse so you have c0 is a pulse for one uh, scan only and then you will reset your counter as well so we we'll reset the counter and we will do the c0 as one pulse so c0 which is our internal uh, contact when it's one pulse it will set c2 now when you set c2 is your start sequence when you start c2 is on now you start your loop oil motor which is the output now also when you do C2, you will start a timer. Let's just say 12 seconds. When your 12 seconds reach it, that means your timer is done. You look at the signal coming from your pressure switch. If it is on, that means your pressure is above 120. You declare that you have a loop start success, which is your C3. That means... I will start do stuff based on C3. Now, if your T0 is reached, which just means your timer is timing and done now, but you don't have your uh, pressure, is not developed, what you do is you have a pulse. Again, PD is a pulse, C4. C4 as a pulse will increase your counter by one. Now, once you do this now what i did here is wanted to show you guys that even if your timer is timing by itself when c2 is on so assume you have a timer and you have your enable is on your timer start timing one two three four and so on during this timing you can actually in automation direct i can write directly to the register which holds the value of my timer that means i can put a value of 50 in my timer even so if my timer is reach let's say five now i can write 50 in it or 100 in it or any value if the timer let's say now reaches uh, 800 i can write 50 in it so I can override the value which is in my timer. So instead of having a five seconds extra time or six seconds or seven seconds in this case, uh, if my first attempt did not reach, like let's say I did not reach my pressure in the first 12 seconds, I will wait for another five seconds or seven seconds. 
So my timer, if I reset this guy, I will go to zero. But I don't do this. What I did is I let C2 on as it is, but I put in my timer 50. So now it reached 120 and I couldn't find the pressure. So I will re reduce the value of the timer to 50. So it start again as if it is not 120, it goes back to 50 and it starts counting, meaning T0 will be off because it is less than 120. So in Automation Direct, what I do is load K20 and then I will put it in TAO, which is my timer value. And here we can see that C4 is my pulse, will increase my counter by one. And this timer, I will reset it in the case I started all over again. Now, if my timer reaches three, that means I have three attempts and there is no success pressure uh, developed in the system, what I will do when my timer is reach this preset value, it reset my counters and it reset my start sequence and I can do many things with it. I can uh, create many things like alarms and things. So in this example, I learned couple of things. The first one is that how I uh, have a pulse to uh, increase my counter. I can change my timer value in the accumulated value. I can write to it in between the uh, PLC uh, ladder sequences. I can change the value of counter as well. So my counter, let's say if it is 5, I can reduce it to 2 or increase it to 20 in the same concept with the same concept thank you for watching the video and i hope if you are not subscribed in my channel please subscribe and uh, if you have any comment let me know and uh, we'll see you in the new video